Uh, hey everyone. Uh, so last time we played the Crash Cup and the Lost Cup. This time we're going to play the Crystal Cup and then see what I feel like afterwards. All of this playing has meant that I got a load of coins and I unlocked another character. I really just unlocked her because uh, I had all of the other Bandicoot girls and she kept appearing at times when I didn't have one for coins to pick her, like to pick up this character. And I was like, oh, I need to get kind of like the whole set. And it's like these characters, they're kind of like they don't, they don't really have any like arc. They're not important to the plot or anything. They were like cheerleaders and trophy girls in the first CTR game. That you only ever really saw if you played like the online stuff, I think, if I remember rightly. Well, they weren't in adventure mode and they weren't playable. But like my brain's kind of latched on a. Oh, technically speaking, they're kind of like. Um... <laughs> Listen to that engine! Oh, just a slightly Russian accent, but it's anyway. Um, yeah, and like they kind of like got in my mind as like, oh, well, they're kind of more classic than the CNK characters and stuff, but it's like, yeah, they're not really. Uh, yeah, all the different colors, usual stuff, they're like just color swaps and then these are like, you have to buy them. Yeah, I already got this one because I just bought her, so I'm going to change the body just so that it's like, keep it interesting. I'm going to choose one with wheels this time so that it's like a little bit different. Oh no, this one makes a whining noise, I don't like that. Um, Highly important, obviously. I feel like I had more cars than this. But I don't think they would take them out. Because it's like... I keep playing the other cars though. This... Play this one. Okay, the graffiti on. We change the wheels to the proper wheels for it. Uh, I think it's these ones, yeah. Um... Let's see what we can get. Uh, don't like the yellow. Candy cone sparkle. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That, they, they do quite a lot, like it does look kind of cool in some of them, but it's like. Kind of messes up all of the graffiti by using these ones here. Um, Green, 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 green. Is that the one I started on? I actually like that one. A waste of time. Uh, a hamburger with his thumbs up this time, why not? Really important, obviously. <clears throat> so this is the first one that we'll do today. Uh, I remember last time we were talking about all of this, like, dank shit that happened at my school when I was in primary and secondary and I felt like, you know, I could bounce off of that and counter with a load of wholesome shit that I used to do which kind of also, like, um, <clears throat> really adds to the we all thought we were edgy but we were actually all huge nerds thing. So, um, yeah, uh, oh, let's see, uh, that's what's the first thing I can talk about. So, like, I had I had this friend, right, uh, in primary school, and he was bullied a lot, because he was literally, like, the, um, the only black guy in the area. He was, his whole family was Nigerian, and they just moved there, and he moved in really late to our primary school, and everyone was a dick to him. He liked playing football, but they used to literally beat him up and stuff, and I was like, I don't get why, because I was literally, like, Kind of raised in a way where I wasn't like even told people would have a problem with these people because of it. Like I was raised in such like, a lot of people go, oh, well, you were raised by a nice family and stuff. It's like, no, I wasn't. I was raised in a horribly negative kind of background where people just didn't tell me basic shit, and I had to work everything else out for myself, like how the world works, basic stuff, like um, uh, like. You know, how to time on shoelaces, I was just expected to know it, I wasn't taught anything, I wasn't taught life skills by anybody, because teachers didn't give a shit, and so my parents just were like, oh, I'm 
to be this deal before we share. Just like, like me. The deal with everything myself. So I had no concept what racism was because I was raised in such a sheltered kind of background where no one gave anyone any shit. And before he showed up, there were loads of like uh, Pakistani and like um, South African, like white South African and. Um, loads of different people from loads of different backgrounds in my school and I was just like oh that's just that person I you know literally could not differentiate at that age I was so young any difference between them I was just like this person Perfect execution. and like one of our friends it turned out real slow one of the guys that I recruited in my year it turned out real early on that like his parents were huge fucking racists because there was no way a seven-year-old knew all of these racist terms just from innate. That's like the philosophy of racism. But racism is not innate. Racism has to be kind of put, passed down to people. I am not the thing. So anyway, yeah. Um, a power touch. Um... So yeah, like he got a lot of shit for it, and it eventually got to the point where he wouldn't, he didn't want to go outside. That he didn't want to go to a break. He would find excuses to stay behind, and then the pe the teachers realized that it was so bad that they um and they felt so uncomfortable that they used to just be like, oh yeah, dude, um, yeah, just go hang out here. And I used to be like, oh, I, f I you know, and I used to hang out with him too, and they used to shove me with him as well. Not for any reason. I wasn't bullied or anything. They were just like, oh, do you, you know, you're friends with him, right? And you're an alright kid. And I'm like, okay. And we used to just spend the whole time. We had the... We just did really stupid stuff. We just spent... Like, first of all, they didn't know what to do with us. So we were just sat indoors. Not in the classroom, but like in the hallways and stuff. Just talking and messing around and doing stupid things and talking about like... He was the guy that had the N64. Um... So we used to talk about video games and like, stuff like that, and like, you know, he was my friend and like, I really liked him, and he was kind of into football, but I didn't really know much about it, and like, he was one of my closest friends, so I just thought, like, oh, i just hang out, like, I don't really understand why <laughs> we're not going outside, but I don't like going outside anyway, that sounds like work, so uh, I don't want to run around, so they were just like, oh yeah, that kid's kind of chubby, just even with this guy, he doesn't <laughs> okay. And like, yeah, like I had a weird relationship with the uh, teachers there because I feel like a lot of the teachers didn't like me, and then apparently they actually did like me, but uh, like I felt like they treated me poorly, um, and they they did really unprofessional uh, shiz that I still remember to this day. But this, this story is not about me. Uh, yeah, like. I just hung out with this guy and I never really realised that I was basically making it sure that like, you know, he wasn't getting bullied because he was hanging out with me. And then it got to the point where they opened a uh, library and they converted an area of the school that was being unused into a library. And they were like, oh, you two are always sat around all day. We got these badges made. Your library monitors now. And we used to just sit in the library and play solitaire on the computer and mine sweep on the computer too much. And like, uh, me and this guy, um, we hung out all the time, and we just like, yeah man, it's funny. And like, uh, we started like, they gave us these little, like, electronic dictionaries, and I was like, oh, I'll just play with that. Because it had like, little games on it as well, but then we were like, <laughs> let's put dirty words in there, and we were like, misspelling <laughs> dirty words, and it was like, do you mean this? And literally like, spelling vagina with an F, and being like, vagina, <laughs> and like, you know, they go, <laughs> and it was like, did you mean vagina? And you're like, it knows. <laughs> and then we put passwords on all of them. <laughs> I got the password. And they were like bricked. <laughs> and everyone's like, we're going to have to reset these, you assholes. So they took them away from us and shoved us in the library because they were just like, oh, you guys are idiots. So we just put you in there. We got little like red and like green badges that were like all like, embossed they weren't like laminated things they were like little metallic pin badges and they're like we're library monitors and everyone's like you guys are fucking losers and we used to just like sit there and like yeah we didn't read the books 
one guy came in and looked at like some of the guys looked in at the books like twice the whole time we were there because they were encouraged to or they got in trouble and they would just be like okay you guys off the playground go to the library and they'd be like hey and they'd be like hey and they pick up a book go um can i read this and we're like well it is a library sure <laughs> and they were, they were like, like what are you guys doing oh we're playing solitaire and they were just like are we allowed to? No, only library monitors are allowed to. And we were just being assholes the whole time. Um, yeah, like, I never really, it never really tweaked with me until we had a conversation. Like, we literally had the Prime, prime Minister, the uh, Principal, or like, head, Headmaster, we used to call him. That was still doing the UK, so that's why I keep getting it. And like somebody in charge beginning with P, no, not principal, and then, yeah, anyway. He, he had a long conversation with all of us saying, you're not allowed to be nasty to people based off of this. And he was a really good headmaster, he was very good at like being mature about things and getting us to listen. Eventually he left the school, uh, but I think it was a few years after he had already gone. And he was like a really great teacher, he put up with a lot of our stuff, and he was just like, look, you need to like, Seriously speaking, and like he was like really like calm and sure about everything. He was told in year six of primary that he's now going to have to teach us sex education because they were, there was a point in the UK where they were like, "Oh, these kids and they're doing the sex and the pregnancies," and I was like, "What?" And like I was saying, like the service I got was thinking that the biological term for the female genital was a going to the vagina and not being able to spell it <laughs> like you know so like you know I'm not getting laid any time soon especially on my library monitor ass <laughs> like I'm playing solitaire on the computer man and like I had loads of like friends who were girls but like um I think one of them ended up being the library monitor as well because she was just like oh it's not fair that you guys get to do it I, I don't want to go outside either so she started to come as well when uh one of us was off sick to replace us and we just hang out for you. And it became like my like four or five friend group. Half of us would just go to the library and just sit there like, I ain't doing any shit anymore. And like, um, yeah, that was, uh, never really realized until we had the uh, big assembly about it that like racism was a thing and like people were like oh yeah it's so funny white people don't understand racism as a thing it's like when you're raised in a situation where you're just raised and nobody tells you shit like literally nobody tells you shit you're just literally doing things um <clears throat> and then somebody's getting beaten up and bullied and shit you're like well that's not very nice and it never crosses your mind you're like, why would anyone have a problem with that guy? He's a great guy, you know? And you're just like, I don't understand. And that's, like, almost how it should be. We should be living in a world where it's like, no one, well, if people are getting attacked based off of this, everyone is just like, well, why? Why should this happen at all? This is, like, pointless. Because it is pointless, and it's just childish, like, nastiness. And it's, like, a lot of the time, from my experiences, <coughs> well, Racism is essentially, well, they can't do anything about it. They're literally born a certain way. Like, you know, I'm born this way, you're born that way. Like, oh no, what am I going to do? You know, it's like pretty fucking stuck, you know what I'm saying? Bit of an asshole thing to get. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, like, so we had this long conversation. He was literally like, you can't call people this. You can't say this word. And I was like, wait, what word? <laughs> like, and like, it was just kind of like, yeah, this principal, uh, headmaster was a real chill guy. He had to take us all, like, all the guys in, like, primary six to one side and explain really advanced sexual <laughs> shit to us. And I do not envy him, because that, like, luckily, as an English teacher in this, uh, in the countries I work in, it's not up to you to sexually educate children. Um, I feel like I don't even know what the sex ed is that you can have sex ed in China and Hong Kong because I, I mean, now I work in a kindergarten, so obviously it's not being talked about there. But like, you'd be surprised at how much they know. Like, I, like one of my students, she's middle school, and of course she knows what it is. She's like literally like legally allowed to have like 
sexual relationships now because it's like someone told me in China. Oh wow. Oh, oh, I lost conch. Oh, well, this is what I'm talking about. Shit, fucking like. I'm gonna leave this in. I'm leaving this in. You can see how shit my setup is. <laughs> like. Yeah! <laughs> how am I still second? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I gotta full screen this again. <laughs> I'm leaving this in. Fuck this. <laughs> like, you can see how, like, the trials of my life. Yeah, like, one of the girls I taught. The, the legal age in China of consent is like 15, but I think you have to be of roughly the same age to be with those people. They're protected. You can't just like have 30 year old chasing after 15 year old girls. It's not. It's like. Anyway, she was talking to me, and I was like talking to me about her boyfriend and stuff, and I was like, oh, okay, cool, because she was stressed from the dance, and she was talking about her boyfriend, and like, oh, she's like, guy and stuff, it was like a casual after school chat, and I was like, oh yeah, and she, I was, I taught her like 10 year old sister, and she was like, oh yeah, she knows all about stuff like that, and I was just like, oh, didn't really realize that that was like a thing, and like, because I have no idea, but like, in our country, it felt like it was taught so early, I had no idea what people were talking about, and they were like, oh yeah, so like, this is this, and I was just like, I had no idea what things are uh, like we were having like pol like we had like a, a WPC um, that's what they used to be called which is literally women's police uh, women's police constable or something like that um, she would come in and give us and uh, like uh, information seminars and she would always come in it was always the same lady and it was also the same lady for secondary school so I saw her all of the time giving these information seminars. It was like her job was basically doing that. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, I should probably close this one off from here, but, like, I need to finish this anecdote now. Um, yeah, and she used to come in and teach us all about drugs and stuff, and I would just be like, I don't understand why this exists. I, I, didn't, I just didn't get a concept. I managed to talk about one anecdote for this entire LP. 